Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to tackle a question that I have from a subscriber. His question was, I want to move to MX Linux from Windows. How do I do it? So that's what we're going to go over in this video. How to install, brief overview, and then of course things you need to do after you get MX Linux installed. But before we begin, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel, those links are in the description down below. First thing you want to do on your Windows machine, let's go ahead and minimize this, is open the Edge browser, go to mxlinux.org, and this is where it'll bring you, and it'll take you over to download. Current release is MX19.4. You pick out what version you want. Do you want KDE? Do you want XFCE? You just basically scroll down, find out what you want, and how do you want to download it? Do you want to go direct repo? Do you want to go mirrors? Or you want to go torrents? I've already downloaded it, so I have it. Also, if you're moving to MX Linux, don't forget this website. A lot of people will go download it, and then if they have issues, they will go to Google or they'll go to Bing and just start typing randomly and how do I fix this? How do I fix that? If you want support, it's right here. Bugs, you've got a forum. If you've got questions, you come over here and you come into the forum and you can search for your question. If it's not there, you can post it. You can also go over here. If there's frequently asked questions, you might have a question that's already been asked and answered. That way you can get that information there too if you need it. So don't forget the web page after you just download the distro. It's very important. So let's close out of that. Then the next thing you want to do after you have your ISO downloaded is go over and download Belina Etcher. It's belina.io slash etcher. Go over there. It says right here, download it for Windows. I've already downloaded it. Let's close out of that. Then you want to go over to your file manager. Go to downloads and then double click on Belina Etcher. After you double click on it, it'll open up just like this. It'll say flash from file. Go ahead, if you've got your USB, go ahead and plug it in. That's what I'm doing right now. Don't worry about that, Windows. I'll close out of that. Flash from file. So you'll want to go over and pick a file. We're going to want to pick MX and open. There's your file. Select your target. There's the USB I just plugged in. Select. And then you'll want to flash it. Now, the flash will generally take anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes. Once that's done, it'll say success. You'll want to go back over into your file, find it down here, right click, and eject it. That's very important. It's safe to remove. Now you can remove it. Now what I recommend you do is let's close out of this. First things first is go over to your file manager. Go to your downloads, your documents, your pictures, your music, your videos. If there's anything in there that hasn't been backed up or downloaded onto a USB, you need to do that now. You don't want to lose any of your stuff. You want to make sure you have all of your data before you do that. Next thing is go over back to your web browser. Let's say you have an Asus ZenBook 14, and then you want to look up hotkey for boot menu. Put in whatever kind of machine you have. Look for the hotkey for boot menu and hit enter, and it'll give you how to access that boot menu. You can scroll down, find out what key that is, whether it's the escape key, the F11, F12, You'll find that key. Once you have that key, it means you can restart your system and you're going to want to press that key with your USB plugged into your system and it'll bring up a boot menu and say, do you want to boot to the hard drive? Do you want to boot to USB? You're going to want to pick boot to USB. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'll be right back with you. Okay, once you restart it, this is what you're going to see. This is what you're going to be met with when you start up from the USB. Now, what you're going to want to do is go up to installer. Now, I'm running this in a virtual machine, so I'm not going to be able to go through the full install, but it's going to be very simple, okay? It's going to ask you for your keyboard layout. It's going to ask you if you want to completely erase the disk and install. You're going to want to choose yes. It'll ask you if you want to include a swap partition, which you do. Swap partition with Hibernate, and that's it. You'll click next. It'll say enter your username, the name of the computer, enter your password, use the password as your administrator password, then click next, and it'll say... Are you sure? Click yes, and it will install. Then it'll ask you to reboot. When you reboot, here is the screen you're going to be met with right here. Here is MX Linux. It's installed on your system. Now, what you're going to want to do, 
is go over here, go to MX Tools, because MX Tools is going to give you the ability to do a live USB kernel up data. You can do that, live USB maker. If you're running MX Linux, you want to try another distribution out there, download it, go into live USB maker, and you can make it right there. Remaster CC, reboot repair, boot options, bash config, NVIDIA. Are you running an NVIDIA video card? Click on that. Then you'll come over here and you'll have to enter the password that you set up for the system and install your NVIDIA drivers. I don't have an NVIDIA, so I'm going to close out of that. Date and time, codex, tweak. Now on tweaks, another thing you might want to do is zip into the tweak manager, click on it. When it opens up, if you're a person that likes double clicking to open things, you're going to want to uncheck that. And then show windows from all workspaces and panel. That's fine. We can apply that, close. Then you got system locales, system keyboard, welcome, package installer, repo manager, package installer. Here's how you install packages on MX Linux. Let's go ahead and make that bigger. Now, under audio, you would click on that. Now, what do you want in, on audio? Do you want Audacity? Do you want Audacious? Let's say you wanted Spotify. You'd click on Spotify, minimize that. What about a browser? Do you want Brave? Do you want Chromium? Do you want Firefox, Opera? Any one of those, let's say you wanted Brave, just click on that, minimize, and you go down through all of this software and pick what you wanted. Let's say you wanted Caden Live, and let's minimize that. Torrent, maybe you want something to download torrents, Qubit Torrent or R Torrent. You just click Qubit Torrent, and you go through these, and you pick all of the software that you want. Once you have everything picked, you would go down here and click Install. It's that simple. It would install it right on your system. So let me close out of that. Now, another thing that you're going to want to do is verify that you have the codex that you need. So you click on codex, authenticate it with your password. This application allows you to install restricted codex that permit advanced video and audio functions. Do you assume legal responsibility for downloading these codex? If you do, click OK. Trust me, you're going to need them. It's just like being on Ubuntu and getting the restricted codex. Click on that. That way you will have the codex necessary to watch your videos and do the things that you need to do. So next, you can also adjust your panel position if you would like. Go into Tweak, and when this print comes up, go to Other, and you can change placement if you want. Right now, it's on the bottom. If you want to put it on top, you go Top and Apply, and it'll move the panel to the top. That's up to you. You can put it on the left. You can put it on the right. You can adjust all that. But that's just something for you to look at and adjust it to the way you like it. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you can come up here. Here's your application menu. Now, if you've got settings that you want to adjust, you've got ad block, firewall configuration, MX tools, MX tweak, system keyboard. Let's go to system settings. There's your system settings. Now, if you like the theme you have, you can stay with it. Some people will like it. Some people won't. Right now, you're on the MX theme, which is you've got dark, and then all your windows are light. Now, if you want to go dark and dark, just go to Breeze Dark. You can click Apply, and it changes everything over to a dark theme. Another thing you want to look at is fonts. If these fonts are the right size and you're good to go, that's fine. But let's say you want to change them. Let's say you want to bump them up to 12. Click on 12, click OK, then come down here and click Apply, and there you go. Your fonts are bigger. Now, I had a question the other day that said, how do I make this font 12.5 if I want it 12.5? Just click on Size, and if you notice, when you arrow, it only goes up one at a time. All you got to do is highlight it and manually put in 12.5, click OK, and Apply. There you go. Now the fonts are at 12.5. So there's some manual things you can do in there. And then icons, of course, just like on your workspace theme, if you don't like these themes that the, you have listed here already, all you have to do is go down here to get new looks, click on it. And if you look over here, and you have a lot to choose from over here, most downloaded or rating. I usually go with rating, which gives me the highest rated ones right off the bat. Sweet KDE, Wii 10 XOS. You can scroll down through here, find something you like, and just click install. And then you'll have a new theme. And then desktop themes, cursor themes, 
splash screen. All of them are the same. You can come down here and get a new theme for all of those. But there's so many different things you can customize here. You can spend hours in here adjusting this system to the way you want it to work. So let's close out of that. You can also right click on the panel. Let's configure the panel. Screen edge, height, add widgets. Let's go up here. You just click and hold on height. Drag down with your mouse and it gets bigger as you can see. Or click and hold, push up and it gets smaller. So you can change that up. Add widgets. You want to add a widget. It'll load a bunch of widgets up over here. As you can see, you can scroll down through them. Or if there's widgets you want that you don't see, you can always go up and do a search and download new widgets. Let me show you how easy it is to use a widget. Let's say you wanted weather report. Click, left click, hold, drag, drop. There it is, configure. You can go over here to weather station. Select. Let's enter a location. Let's enter Dallas. And let's go with NOAA and do a search. Let's go Dallas Low Field. Apply. Let's make sure it's in Fahrenheit. It is. Click OK. And there you go. You've got Dallas Low Field. Now you can just click on it and drag it to wherever you want. And it'll tell you seven-day forecast details, what the dew point and things like that are. If that's something you want, there it is. You can have it. And we want to look at Dolphin. There's your file manager. It's a very good-looking file manager. Now, if there are things over here, if there's categories over here you don't want over here, just get rid of them. Recently saved, search for. Let's say you don't want search for. Right-click, hide it, it's gone. You want these icons and applications over here bigger? Let's go ahead and click on that. Bump that icon size up to large. It's easier to see that way. And then you can move these if you want to. If you want desktop at the bottom and you want root all the way at the top, just move it up. Home, downloads, trash. Or you can add different things to your places if you want. That's up to you. But that was just a quick look at how to download MX Linux, how to burn it to a USB, how to install it to your PC, and things you need to do after you install it and to get you up and going. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Is anybody else out there that watched this video, is MX Linux something you might want to take a shot at? Download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual box and take it for a test drive. Let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you go. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee or better yet, become a patron to the channel. The links are in the description below. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.